Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. I am Paul and this is the ASUS Poseidon Platinum ROG GeForce GTX 780. ASUS has designed a special hybrid cooler for this NVIDIA GPU, combining air and water cooling capabilities into the same unit and providing an easy path to custom liquid cooling configurations for PC gaming enthusiasts. So let's start out with an exploded view of this card to show how the cooler works. At the back, you have an aluminum backplate, followed by the custom-designed PCB with DigiPlus power delivery, SAP chokes, 10K black metallic caps, and high-efficiency MOSFETs. The hybrid cooling unit features die-cast thermal armor to protect and cool the VRMs, and a direct copper contact vapor chamber with an integrated water channel. An aluminum fin array sits on top of that to aid with the air cooling, and an attractive ROG-themed red and black shroud protects the two 90mm dustproof fans and sports a pulsating backlit red ROG logo. Now, as you may have noticed, I have taken the liberty of setting up uh, sort of a custom water cooling loop to test this card and compare the air-cooled and water-cooled performance. I used the Cooler Master Glacier 240L CPU cooler, and I kind of hacked together the rest of this using uh, some, some tubing and some some fasteners, some hose clamps that I got at the local hardware store. Fortunately, I already had some uh, GM1 quarter inch barbs on hand and it was very kind of ASUS to use these fittings. Uh, since GM1 quarter is quite common, it allows you to use the barb or compression fittings of your choice when you're setting up the water cooling. The rest of the procedure involved draining the Glacier 240L, cutting my extra tubing and attaching it to the barbs with my clamps, and integrating a small reservoir so I could more easily refill the loop. Remember to pay attention to the directionality of the water flow and the reservoir should be positioned to feed directly into the pump's intake and also be positioned physically above the pump. Finally, with the tubing secured, I refilled the loop with distilled water, making sure to never let the pump run dry and cycling the liquid through in short bursts before topping off the reservoir again. I powered the pump with a jumpered power supply as you should never fill a water cooling loop with the components actually powered on in case a spill or a leak occurs. With the water cooling loop set up, the GPU temperatures actually dropped by about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, depending on the benchmark I was running, of course. And that allowed me to achieve a very substantial overclock using the ASUS GPU Tweak software. I bumped the GPU's boost clock up to 1241 megahertz max, up from the out-of-the-box boost speed of 1058 megahertz. That's about a 17% bump up from the manufacturer's overclock and more than 23% faster than the reference GTX 780. I also pushed the memory speed from 6,000 to 6,500, and the highest temperature that we saw in testing on the GPU was 49 degrees Celsius, so it never, never even got above 50. But on to the benchmarks. Our test bed features an Intel Core i7 4960X clocked to 4.5 GHz, cooled by a Cooler Master Sidon 120XL closed loop CPU cooler. Motherboard is an ASUS Rampage 4 formula with 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident X DDR3 memory running at 2400 MHz. A SanDisk Ultra Plus 256 GB SSD contains our Windows 7 64-bit operating system and an array of games and benchmarks. And the system is housed in an open in-wind D-frame chassis powered by Rosewell Hercules 1600 watt power supply. One last thing is that all these benchmarks, except the 3D Mark presets, of course, were run at 4K 3840 by 2160 resolution on the new ASUS PQ321Q monitor. So there you have it, 4K benchmarks, and if the frame rate seemed a little bit low, please bear in mind that I am still running very high graphics settings and anti-aliasing, which is kind of silly at 4K to be honest, so 
Turning those settings down a little bit could result in much more playable FPS numbers if you're planning on going for a configuration like this at home. But before we close, I do want to point out the video outs on this card. You get two dual link DVI ports, HDMI 1.4 and DisplayPort 1.2, as well as the 6-pin and 8-pin PCI Express graphics power connectors, and the existence of two SLI fingers, meaning you, you could set up two-way or three-way SLI configurations if you've got the means to do so. That's all for this video, though. Don't forget to like, uh, hit the subscribe button, give me a comment down in the comment section below, and let me know what you think of the design of this card, because I find it very compelling, but at the same time, somewhat niche. There's only a certain number of people, I think, who might be looking to buy an air-cooled car ride, card right now, and then maybe upgrade to water cooling in the future. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.